I'm running out of stupid things to say, so here's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. It's, it's still stupid. Welcome back to X Play. You know, every time I think to myself, Adam, what would you enjoy less than a knife in the kidney? And I always say, reviewing a Pokemon game. Yeah, well, Pokemon may have jumped the shark, but don't tell developers that because they just released a new Pokemon game, and it's aimed at five-year-olds. So, of course, I gave it to Adam, and he threw it back at me. So I tried to tap into my inner child to review Pokemon Channel. Now my inner child is whimpering. Mine isn't. <laughs> I'm here on the scene. Welcome to Pokemon Channel, Nintendo's newest Pokemon game. You play a crack television tester. The good folks down at the Pokemon channel sent you a TV, and your job is to watch it. Actually, your job is to watch your Pikachu watch TV. The thing is, there's not really that much on. There are episodes of an insipid cartoon called Pichu Brothers in Party Panic. I think the pink one's horny. Since Pokemon only say their names ad nauseum, you spend the whole time reading subtitles. Well, at least the kitties are learning to read. There's the quiz channel, though I didn't seem to know any of the answers. Hmm, can I get a lifeline from the eight-year-olds in the audience? This is the egg hatching channel. You watch it for five minutes until the egg hatches. No, I'm not kidding. On this channel, you wait until the weather changes. May I point out that at no time are you required to hit any buttons? Oh, and for those of you who don't know, hitting buttons is what makes something a video game. This is the relaxation channel, because I'm not bored enough. You have to watch these boring, ridiculous shows all the way through. Then you have to wait until the next day to get new shows, which is also known as resetting your system clock. In case you're wondering where the game part comes in, it doesn't. You literally watch your Pikachu watch TV. The shopping channel could count as slightly interactive. Ooh, a turd doll. God, Pikachu's gonna want it. Pikachu wants you to buy him everything he sees on TV. He's like having a bratty child. Squirtle sounds like he's on the losing end of a 40-year smoking habit. You can take screen captures and color them in, then sell them at auction or have them discussed on the art show. Or you could buy a coloring book and some crayons. That would be funner and cheaper. Yep, that's about as interactive as it gets. You can go outside with Pikachu and meet other Pokemon. You can make Pikachu water your garden or look at certain landscape features. But mostly, Pikachu wants to watch TV and buy things. The whole experience of watching something watch TV feels like some bizarre comment on society that needs further study. But not for 40 bucks, and not by me. Pokemon Channel gets a 1 out of 5 for not actually being a video game. This feels like a weird Japanese title that should never have been imported. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's being sold as a game. At best, it's sort of a DVD with a large disc menu. I was just playing the entire game looking at the screen like this. I imagine that's how the viewers look at us. Seriously, people, you really should know them by now. It's Adam Zessler and Morgan Webb. I'm Adam. It's yes, me. It's Adam. Welcome back to X Play. Pokemon. Hi. The name brings joy to little children and sheer unbridled panic to adults everywhere. As one anonymous parent recently stated, I'd rather have unanesthetized prostate surgery than sit through another Pokemon movie. Mm -hmm. Well, don't worry, this game isn't based on a Pokemon movie. Mm -hmm. No, it's the first real Pokemon game for the GameCube, Pokemon Coliseum. And unable to roll over in its grave, the majestic Roman structure that lends Pokemon Coliseum its title will be quietly crumbling throughout this review. Goodbye, history. Hello, review of Pokemon Coliseum. The course of human history is strewn with the scars of conflict. And we would never have come so far if we hadn't been at each other's throats. But in a world where plump innocent beasties fight in an endless proxy war has so much ever rested on the shoulders of one young boy and his balls. Pokeballs, you 
pervert. Pokemon Coliseum is more of what the fans want. More Pokemon, more battles, and more battles. It's like cockfighting without prison time. As your abilities grow, you can catch more powerful Pokemon. So how do I know so much about Pokemon? Well, when it's time to throw down, no one gets it done like the Sessler. However, there are times when Pokemon aren't the weapon of choice, as my recent encounter with some gaming heavies illustrates. Sessler, we want those cheat codes. Yeah. Well, you may want the cheat codes, but I'm not going to give them to you because I have Pokemon. Okay, not my best work. Social skills in the Pokemon world aren't very sophisticated. Case in point, they have battles instead of greetings. If you meet an enemy, you battle. And if you meet a friend, you battle. I think all these people went to the prom alone. The tone of the game is a touch edgier than earlier titles. See, you were part of a criminal gang of Pokemon poachers, but you betrayed your buddies and stole a special gadget that lets you capture dark Pokemon. These dark Pokemon have a special hyper mode, which makes their attacks more damaging, but they're so disobedient they might attack your other Pokemon, or even you. You can purify these Maladrots by using turns in battle to heal them. Tactically, this is a compromise. Healing means they can level up and learn new moves, but leaves you at a disadvantage during the fight. The strength of the franchise is also its weakness. Pokemon Coliseum plays at the shallow end of the strategy pool, and most of the gameplay is spent navigating lists and menus. Pokemon fans will dig it, but then, I don't really need to tell you that. Other gamers will get a good chance to try out the trademark rock, paper, scissors gameplay to see if it makes them swoon with the light. X-Play gives Pokemon Coliseum a three out of five. Now, how many times can you be burned, pummeled, and shocked in one show? Well, it depends on if we give the interns baseball bats. Mm, it's a good, not a bad idea. We have to review another darn Pokemon game. Look. Just because Adam and I don't like Pokemon, it does not mean we don't appreciate that many of our fans love it. They really, really love it. And that frightens us. But not as much as the thought of a Pokemon racing game on the Nintendo DS. Here's a review of Pokemon Dash. Pokemon spin-offs come in two flavors, innovative and horribly wrong. Pokemon Dash comes from the good folks at Umbrella. Close. The Umbrella Corporation brought us teeming hordes of brain-eating zombies. Umbrella brought us this. Yeah, but let's put the past behind us. Way behind us. And take a look at Pokemon Dash. In this racing-style Pokemon game, you'll scamper around as everyone's favorite lightning rodent as you dash from checkpoint to checkpoint. Race alongside semi-popular Pokemon over roads, forests, swamps, and water. Occasionally, you'll need to take to the air to find your next checkpoint or get over hazards. Hey, I can see my lack of enthusiasm from here. The top screen acts as your radar to find the next randomly generated checkpoint. A straight line will not always be the quickest path to any point as obstacles will slow down your little Pokemon. Just a reminder, the green is grass, the blobs are forests, and the blue stuff, water. Don't worry about anything else getting in your way. There's nothing else in these sparse levels. You control Pikachu from a top-down perspective on the bottom screen. Move the stylus over the screen in the direction you need this rat to race. This is where the game becomes a pain in the wrist. You'll need to rub and scrub and viciously stroke your way to victory. To get through the different cups and tracks Dash offers, you'll need to find someone used to hours of repetitive stroking. It's fairly clear that Pokemon Dash was rushed like it had its mom knocking at the bathroom door. The game offers only one Pokemon to choose from, Pikachu. There's no unlockable Pokemon. No poke powers to speak of. You'll be petting your little friend for some time. Up to eight players can get together to rub, to scrub, to stroke, to molest. This also requires you to find someone else to admit to buying the game. Dash lets you create nearly 400 new tracks by inserting your previous Pokemon game. There's nothing new to the new tracks, just different strokes for different folks. Of course, 
With this much rubbing involved, you'll want to avoid more sucking. Pokemon Dash starts out as a decent idea, but gets tired like a one-joke review. What? This is going to be the best Sunday ever. Oh, yeah, right there. That's why we give Pokemon Dash a two <laughs> out of five. Now, Pokemon Dash was originally designed to demonstrate the capabilities of the Nintendo DS. Which means they're trying to play it off like this is a real game when it's basically a glorified tech demo. Way to half-ass it, guys. You and I half-ass this show most of the time. Well, maybe we're a glorified tech demo for G4. Rub your screen vigorously to find out. Like shooting things using her mouse. That's because death is prettier on the PC. And almost anything is prettier than the GBA these days. Ah, uh, true. Now, while the DS and PSP have better graphics, the GBA owners have nothing to worry about. Like the mother of octuplets on a delivery room table, Nintendo is still popping out a ton of kid-friendly titles for this tiny handheld. Isn't that how Natalie Portman died in episode three? No, no, she died of apathy and bad dialogue poisoning. Oh, right. Okay, well, kid-friendly doesn't always equal original or fun. Which is why we have to view yet another Pokemon game for the Game Boy Advance. Yes, another one. Here's a review of Pokemon Emerald. Don't wake me. They're cute, they're furry, they battle to the death for your amusement. So what do you do when you've already caught them all? Catch them all again in Pokemon Emerald, Nintendo's remix of the Sapphire and Ruby Pokemon games. You can fight Pokemon and capture Pokemon and win badges to fight more Pokemon. And there you go. If you love Pokemon, play it. You don't keep living your life the best you can. I finished the review already. They're Pokemon. You catch them and you fight them. Hey, and it's not like we can't just run the last Pokemon review. Let's see. The box is new. It's green. Uh, it has the new Pokemon Rock Rocku Rayku. Snakey, that's it, Snakey. This name thing is easy. The story goes something like this. You're a boy or girl who blah, 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 and then must save the world from blah, 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 and then you become King Trainer or something. The story doesn't matter. Capture Pokemon and battle them. Emerald lets you take on both Team Magma and Team Aqua in one game. Why don't they just eviscerate you with a laser or punch you in the face instead of sending out more Pokemon? The newest addition to Emerald is the Battle Frontier. There you'll find the Battle Pike, the Battle Dome, the Battle Factory, the Battle Arena, the Battle Palace, and the Battle Pyramid. No, I'm not making this up. You'll need to beat the game first just to get a glimpse of the pastel ravaged soil. Pokemon now sport two frames of action. With the two on two duels, that's a whole four frames of the most in-your-face Pokemon action seen since the last Pokemon game. The game gives you a lot of little new bonuses, but let me give you an example. This is my desk. This is my desk with a Pokemon. Like the added little bonuses in the game. It's nice, but it doesn't change anything. What else is new? Um, contests. They're not really all that new, but they're back. Pokemon packs one of the most robust RPG engines in a plush toy. With over 360 Pokemon to choose from, you have an infinite amount of variations when it comes to moves, stats, and strategy. Hidden values, such as happiness and IV, can change how or what Pokemon evolve into. The breeding system alone would make Gregor Mendel wet himself. <laughs> what? I wouldn't waste a Watson and Crick joke on a Pokemon game. The problem is you can play through the game without touching the deeper fluff. Nefari. Unless you're looking forward to hours of walking, attacking, walking back to town, and healing, this game is not for you. If you're the kind of guy who thinks your level 75 Tropius can so kick my Kombuskin around Hoenn, then you already have Ruby and Sapphire, and you don't really need Emerald. Pokemon Emerald dishes out a solid gaming experience without bringing anything new to the plate. That's why we give it a 3 out of 5. Well, look at you busting out the Tropius and Kombuskin talk. It's because I've reviewed too many damn Pokemon games. I've got Bulbasaur's coming out of my Pokeballs. Morgan, please stop talking about your Pokeballs. It's indecent. Well, look, if you need to play this game, don't buy it. Rent it somewhere like Gamefly.com. They have hundreds of games for you to rent or buy so you can spend your money on important things like blow-up dolls and therapy sessions. What? Please welcome your totally judgmental co-hosts, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Hello and welcome to X-Play, the show that blends careful 
critical evaluation with completely infantile humor. And on today's show, it doesn't get more infantile than Pokemon XD. Yes, a game for children that somehow has bewitched and obsessed our adult review team. Yeah, but we begin with something for the children. Oh, and for adults with a strange definition of the word fun. Yes, it's Pokemon. Damn it. Here's our view of Pokemon XD. Hero with crazy hair? Check. Colorful environments filled with strange creatures? Check. An overwhelming urge to catch them all? Uh, we're still working on that one. As a continuation of the Colosseum series, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness for the GameCube provides all the Pokemon battling, leveling up, and mind-numbing text you've come to expect from a Pokemon game. If you love to collect Pokemon the same way Tara Reid collects unemployment checks, then this game is for you. Set five years after the previous installment of Colosseum, the Cypher organization is back and do what all evil organizations do. Call during dinner, send angry letters to senators, and steal a cargo ship filled with Pokemon. These rainbow ribbon renegades have learned of a way to tame the shadow Pokemon. With the help of science and the breaking of child labor laws, your left arm has been given the power over the shadows. How convenient. Most Poke players will find this Vespa filled adventure more developed than the usual fare. With this much work put into the story, you have to wonder. Why couldn't any of the trainers get real names instead of rejects from an Ikea catalog? Game mechanics remain intact as you fight your little Pokemon up the food chain to gain experience. Lick, leer, and flambe your way through battles. Pokemon's rock, paper, scissors style of fighting makes sure that there's not one Pokemon to rule them all. As your Pokemon grow, you control their attacks and how they will change through evolution. Unless you live in Kansas. Then God chooses for you. What? Pokey what? Here's the good news. Pokemon XD does away with random battles. Roam free, little one. Fear not the screen of battle. The bad news? That means there are very few wild Pokemon to catch. Your army consists mostly of Eevee and whatever shadow Pokemon you can poach. Pokemon XD gives these furballs shady cousins a bit more respect. Shadow Pokemon have a range of powerful shadow attacks that can take down most non-shadow types. The more you use them, the more powerful they become. Occasionally, they go crazy, like... Oh, just pick one. The fact is that we've seen it all before in the last Colosseum game. Seen that place, seen that Pokemon, seen those giant lifeless eyes that cry out, Why me? Fine, just wanted to inject a little drama. Pokemon XD tries to add in that extra dimension with little things like Pokemon Bingo, Pokemon Challenges, and a new purification system. In the end, these minigames add little to the gameplay. Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness makes for a solid Poke experience for any Poke player, but it doesn't add anything to the Poke game. That's why we give this Poke adventure a Poke 3 out of a Poke 5. G give him a water gun. What, I'm too late? Oh, sh Whoa, watch the language, Lord. And the hate mail cometh. Of course, if you must have this Pokemon game, don't buy it. Rent it somewhere like Gamefly.com. They have hundreds of games for you to rent or buy so you can save your money for important things like your ADD medication or Pop Rocks. Mm -hmm. Now, we know we've spent a lot of time on the show openly mocking Pokemon fans. Well, because it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. And we understand that sometimes our words can hurt. That's why I took it upon myself to get to know one of the special people who eats, sleeps, and breathes the mighty and completely outdated game known as Pokemon. Pokemon is little more than a memory now pushed aside by better, stronger card games. But I'm interested in the victims. Meet Billy. Billy was caught off in the catch em all fever, but he was left behind when fickle American consumers moved on. Billy, you love Pokemon. It's the greatest game in the world. You have to bash. Shh. What is it like being a grotesque social outcast? Grotesque? You know, uh, a human freak show. Um, I, I guess it's having no one else to play with. I mean, sometimes I play with myself, but it's just not the same. Have you ever been with a woman caressing her skin with her fingers, slowly kissing her as she giggles softly, 
pushing the material of her shirt up higher and higher towards her head, revealing her plunging neckline to move in for one final. You ever done that? Sometimes when I get scared, I like to pretend I'm Billy Chu. What does Billy Chu sound like? Billy Chu. Billy, Billy Chu. As I spent more time with Billy, I started to understand his pain. What is it like to be a turn-based man in a real-time world? Learning more about his obsession was the only way to help me help him. Basic Pokemon, the evolutionary Pokemon, this one unless the play or nasal okay. against your Bayleaf, which is a leaf. And then you'll have your EX pains. I gain what? basic Pokemon. Shut up! They're f***ing cards! They're cards! These are real! This is nothing! It's a bunch of cards for children! Oh! The, the, look, the game's not for children. It's just really stupid. Okay, it's lame-ish. It's for retarded children. I had earned Billy's trust, and I suspected with just a little bit of help, Billy could live a normal life again. Do you have any friends, Billy? Well, of course. There's uh, Squirtle. Ooh, and, is that what you just did in your pants? And Charmander and Pikachu. Ones that aren't Pokemon. Oh, there's Mai and Ash and Misty. Ones that aren't characters from the show. Um, there's... And over the age of 10. Uh, and not your mom. Oh, there's this homeless man who uh, pays me a dollar. Touches me in my bathing suit area. Yeah. Did you have to change for a five? Uh, what? Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding, Billy. You know, the producers and I got together and we found a group of Pokemon players for you to play with. Really? Right over there. Oh, boy! Get down, bitches! I'm all in, son! Yeah! You guys play Pokemon? Pokemon? This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Town, mother f***! You're the wrong good, Holmes. Yeah. Really true? <laughs> You know, the best part of this job is helping a man feel good about himself. Well, my work here is done. Be sure you tune in to the next Sensitive Sess. We're taking a man with a fear of nerds to Gen Con Anaheim. You know, Billy Chu never fully recovered from his brutal assault at the hands of a Yu-Gi-Oh gang. But I think we all learned something from his story. Don't screw with the Yu-Gi-Oh fans. Yeah, yeah, that was really sweet, the way you went back to steal his wallet. Can you believe that kid only had two bucks and a Crystal Energy Aquapolis card in there? Yeah, actually, I would. Why? Lose. Today's assignment, photograph the elusive Pokemon. How do you do it? You're gonna be fast! You need a keen eye, domestic equipment, and lightning quick reflexes! No, you don't. All you need is Pokemon Snap, the first Pokemon game for N64. Find them, frame them, and shoot. You can even bring your Snap cartridge to a participating blockbuster video and print out stickers of your favorites. Doesn't look like they're coming out today. Odd luck. Pokemon Snap, gotta catch them. I'm here live with the new Pokemon trading card game champion. Congratulations on the victory. Thanks. You know, I just gotta thank my Pokemon. I couldn't have done it without him. Pokemon! Let's go to the Telestrator. Here, Brown attacks with a vicious Beedrill. What went through your mind? When I saw that, I knew I could school it with my Charizard. Oh, again on wrist cam. Wow, you got game. Yeah, it helps out a fire breather on your side. Right, Charizard? The official Pokemon trading card game. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat. Sold separately. Fishing. Ski 
Surfing. You can shake things up with Pokemon Pikachu too. The more you shake it, the more Pikachu will do for you. Get me down. You can trade blocks and shake it up with friends. Pokemon Pikachu too. Over 100 phrases. Attack. Interact with all your Think Chip figures. We won! And boost their hit points for the Battle Stadium. Yeah. Think Chip Ash comes with everything shown here. Additional Pokemon figures and Battle Stadium sold separately. Makaida! Mudkip! Torchic! Wilmer. Beautifly. Woo Kyogre. Shroomish. Why not? Cackleon! You can pre-order Pokemon Ruby or Pokemon Sapphire now and get a limited edition holographic coin. Rated E for everyone. Pokemon trading card game Platinum Rising Rivals brings exciting trainers and Pokemon together in awesome battles. Rising Rivals. A rivalry is born. Each booster pack of 10 cards will separate cards vary by pack. Pokemon trading card game Platinum. Supreme victors with new sizzling Pokemon Level X cards. Pokemon trading card game Platinum. Supreme victors in stores now. Each booster pack of 10 cards sold separately. Cards vary by pack. Pokemon Diamond and Pokemon Pearl were just the beginning. You can explore a new world in the Sinnoh region. Discover powerful new forms of Pokemon and experience the all-new Wi-Fi Plaza and Battle Frontier. The epic new adventure arrives March 22nd. You can reserve a copy of Pokemon Platinum and get this limited edition Giratina Origin Form figure. Deposit may be required. Pokemon Platinum, rated E for everyone.